Two rivers and a mountain border our land. South Marlborough is a place of stunning vistas and strong community. From the heights of the majestic Mount Tapuai or Guanuku, down the Awateri and Waiotoa rivers to the coast. Let us take you off the grid on an adventure to discover South Marlborough. Munga Awa Moana. Kia ora. I'm Lee Griggs, an off the grid adventurer. I'm lucky enough to live where I can step out of the back door and into an adventure playground. In this series, we will meet local characters and find hidden gems. Come with me to explore the untapped potential of South Marlborough, where there truly is something for everyone. The Awatiri Valley Trust is a small group of people that cares about the heart of the community aesthetically and socially. We work with quite a number of different groups. Our first project was creating the Tui Park and we did that with the help of the lions and the local people. You know, we wanted to improve things aesthetically and socially so that um, people felt proud to live here and that it was a nice place to visit. The youth needed something to do and, one of the, and they decided they'd like to have a bike track. So we thought we'd help them achieve that. We fundraised with the youth group for their bike track and have hosted other events. The Aotearoa Valley Trust has been able to provide an umbrella structure enabling others to achieve their goals such as the Early Childhood Hub and the South Marlborough Network. We are there to assist with things like that, um, to manage or organise or help. We've been here in Seddon for 32 years in the cosy corner. We wanted to make something a wee bit more specialised compared to most other people. So we started our homemade pies, but now we do a mussel pie, seafood pie. We do a scallop pie as well, bacon and egg with cheese and tomato, steak and mushroom, steak, steak and cheese, mince, mince and cheese, um, chicken, chicken and mushroom, peppered steak, and Oh, steak and mushroom, I can't remember. There's heaps anyway, and we make our own sausage rolls. People come into the bar at night, they're all pretty mature people, most of them, and <laughs> you have the odd rat bag. We do try and support most local sports people in our community. We've got a brilliant team of staff. You can't do it on your own. You've got to have good team members. Hello, my name's Angus Moore. Um, we're just here at the Flaxbourne Shears, the AMP show, uh, 2021, and we've just uh, finished our shearing competition for the day. My wife and I live in Seddon, and, and we um, run a, a shearing uh, services business. Um, we we uh, service um, farms from Clarence in the south, Waiatoa, uh, to Sananad uh, in the northwest, and then we go out into the Marlborough Sounds. We basically cover the area that I grew up in. Uh, Blacksbourne area is um, one of the first places for sheep to be in the country. Local ag shows showcase the heart and soul of rural areas. At the Flaxbourne show, you'll find the whole community celebrating our farming roots. So today's competition is uh, it's just a shearing competition. There's lots of competitions all over New Zealand. 
and um, we're obviously at an AMP show, so it's good to show the agricultural and pastoral um, side of um, New Zealand to people who are not necessarily um, involved at all with it. And a really important part of that is, is showcasing sharing and, um, and showing people that um, you know, sharing is about animal health and the welfare of the sheep and looking after um, that side of it. The move from traditional sheep and beef farming and the rise of viticulture means we are now dependent on workers in the recognised seasonal employer programme. This has brought our South Pacific neighbours closer and the opportunity for our communities to connect. Hi, I'm Catherine Vandermeulen from Entrepreneurial Women with Purpose. We started Entrepreneurial Women with Purpose last year and that was really about educating, empowering and investing into women all across New Zealand and extending that also out to the Pacific with our impact education program. Uh, everything that we do is underpinned by five of the UN Sustainable Development Goals which are quality education, gender equality, good health and well-being, uh, partnerships to enable and really achieve those goals and decent work and economic growth. And you know growing your own food is a really important uh, part of the journey uh, and you guys are all such earth-based uh, people and I feel like we also have a lot to learn from you culturally about how you actually grow food and the food that is your natural day-to-day -day nutrition uh, in, the, in the islands. Uh, the thing that I'm most excited about at the moment is our impact education program where we are supporting a group of women who are here in Marlborough under the RSC scheme, the Regional Seasonal Employment Scheme hosted by uh, MFAT and MBIE and really enabling them with the education of entrepreneurship and leadership to be able to support them when they do return home to Vanuatu next year, that we are enabling them to create business opportunities for the future. Village to Village came about when Tracy, Alex and I got the opportunity to work as mentors on the Entrepreneurial Woman with Purpose Impact Education Program in 2020. After many conversations, we worked alongside seven amazing REC workers, mentoring them and helping them to work towards their goals of running their own businesses. During this time, we had many conversations around the need to do a bit more with REC workers. They come here to work, but what else do they do? So we decided to set about setting up the, the trust so that we could support them through micro-enterprise and community village funds. Uh, the way we've designed uh, this trust is a sponsorship model. So one sponsorship has many impacts. It impacts the individual. Uh, the family and the community. So within one uh, sponsorship of an RSC worker or uh, of the trust, um, we are making a ripple effect through the Pacific Islands. That ripple effect also comes back to Marlborough. It comes back to us through our reputation as an employer and as a region. In 2016, my mother Jill and I set up a business called Kiwi Clean Living, distributing cook stoves across the Pacific. Since then we have distributed 200 cook stoves ranging from the Kiribati, Fiji, Vanuatu, Solomons, Tonga and Samoa, helping women and children to get away from cooking over open fires. Friends of ours in Lesotho, Africa had designed a cook stove to aid women across Africa to stop cooking on open fires. It became apparent to us 49% of families across the Pacific still cook on open fires. Since then we have teamed up with other businesses locally here in Marlborough to help work with the RSC women while they're here working in the vineyards to learn about cooking over open fires and the health effects from it. We've also been covering nutrition and business education. So um, the women are very keen to take home a cook stove and I just, I feel quite excited about that because knowing the effects that cooking on an open fire has on your health and, and the time it takes to cook on open fires, by having one of these cook stoves take back home with you, you're going to have no smoke blowing in your faces, you're going to be able to cook your meals in a very short amount of times so without having to harvest all that wood that you do and sit around that smoky fire inhaling all that smoke. So it'll, it'll leave time for you to be able to go and further your education or work on your businesses and spend time with your families which I just think is a very, very exciting thing. Uh, the open fire is we use another kitchen like outside mm -hmm. to make an open fire yeah. but for the cooking stove. 
it's fire but we can still put it inside because it doesn't kill smoke. Hey, I'm Mandy Harris, chef and nutritionist. I'm super excited to be working with Sarah with Kiwi Clean Living um, and the ladies from Vanuatu and the work that we can do with them in these countries. There's so much we can do with food. It's actually, it excites me a lot because it's so simple. Teaching people and educating people and supporting people to be able to move back to their cultural foods, their local foods, not only to have supply of it, but to know how to produce it, to know how to cook it, and to know how to use it effectively to benefit their health. Um, so that's a massive part of what I do. The Village to Village Charitable Trust is about giving back. RSC workers come to New Zealand every year to work in our viticultural and horticultural industries. And we just wanted to see how we could change things up a bit so that we could be giving back as a community. So the Trust is really about communities supporting communities. Cause when I see you I illuminate you turn my lemons into lemonade And I'm thinking that you feel the same I, I, I can feel it I can feel it I can feel it I, I, I can feel it I can feel it I can feel it I, I, I Feeling like a holiday Yeah, you make me wanna celebrate You move my body like a hurricane And now I'm thinking that you feel the same I, I, I can feel it I can feel it I can feel it I, I, I can feel it Two rivers and a mountain border our land. South Marlborough is a place of stunning vistas and strong community. From the heights of the majestic Mount Tapuai or Guanuku, down the Awateri and Waiotoa rivers to the coast. Let us take you off the grid on an adventure to discover South Marlborough. Munga Awa Moana. Today we're heading up the Molesworth, 101 kilometers of high country four wheel drive road through towering mountains and river valleys that frame the majestic Mount Tapuai or Uanuku. This historic travel route to Hamner Springs is rich in farming history and a unique addition to your brilliant backyard bucket list. We have three rivers bounding us, the Tyne River up to the west, Winterton River to the east and the Awatiri to the north. The property encompasses 16,000, but over 16,000 hectares, or 42,000 acres, uh, balance of pastoral lease and freehold land. Um, a, a sort of more of a continental climate, uh, an inland, um, relatively hot, 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 dry summers and reasonably cold, um, cold winters. That are, uh, we rely on a ideally a, a spring rain and, and, and good autumn rains. There's, I dare say it's been a bit of a bit of an interesting ride since we've been here. We, as Susan said, we arrived here in 1998 with a, a uh, double cab Land Rover and, 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 a, and a load of kids and um, that was about it and we've um, chipped away here over the years and, and developed the base farming business, the, the sheep and cattle operation. We've also um, added a, um, through passion, um, probably mainly driven by Susan, a, a merino stud. Our, our kids and 
they're all involved. Alongside the merino stud, McDonald's also supply wool to luxurious clothing brands, even wedding dresses, and run Middlehurst Delivered, an online home delivery meat service. Something the kids are very keen on is their um, using compostable packaging, um, wool, wool liners for their wool cool boxes that are carried around the country. You can get them in a half sheep or a whole sheep, in modern cuts or modern cuts or traditional cuts. Um, so we want to, you know, be able to people to be able to come here and be able to see firsthand uh, what, what we do, and we can also um, showcase our. Our, our, our products. So we have a, a wonderful chef here, Lynette, makes a feature of the of the Middlehurst delivered uh, meat product, and and people often want to um, touch and feel uh, a, a, some end processing of, of of the wool side of it. So it's it's a great venue for that. And you know we want people to be able to have a have a good time doing doing what they're doing. So we can do do mountain biking or like we had a group the other day that. Um, had been to from Kaikoura that had been and done a whale watch and then they, they flew in here and, 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 and had lunch and got a bit of an understanding of what we did and, and then, then went again and so there's, uh, there's, there's a lot of opportunity but all this comes with a uh, we, we can't do it on our own so we it's, it's just a it's a building and process type thing. You're at Camden Station up the Awateri Valley road halfway between Seddon and Molesworth station. Um, we're on a seven and a half thousand hectare high country station uh, farming predominantly merinos and Angus cattle. My husband was born and bred up the road at, at Gladstone and uh, his parents bought this property uh, about 20 years ago and uh, through succession we have come to be farming this property. It's a beautiful spot. I mean, just look around. <laughs> okay, we have uh, shearers' quarters on our farm that uh, that uh, are used obviously for the shearers during August, September, and May for crutching. And uh, while I had preschoolers and I was stuck at home, I thought, well, we could uh, use use these quarters through the summer when the road was open through the Molesworth and open it up to cyclists and uh, four-wheel drivers. Uh, motorcyclists, anybody going through the valley. So it's a fully equipped kitchen and uh, living area, so all you need to bring is your food. Prior to COVID, each summer was definitely getting slowly busier. Uh, I think this tourist route is becoming a bit more on people's bucket list and uh, getting busier every year. But since COVID, it has really taken off. Uh, we have a lot of domestic tourists cycling through the Molesworth and uh, wanting to stay. We have the accommodation on Airbnb and Booking.com as well, so we get a lot of people just driving through who want to stay out in the country rather than in the in the main centres. It's, uh, it's amazing, there's a lot of people that are really get into the outdoors. We've uh, had a lot of city folk through, a lot of Aucklanders and uh, people that are based in cities, so they love coming to places like this, which is totally different for them. Um, and also we're on fibre internet, so you've got Wi-Fi in here and good fast internet. Uh, well, these guys were born end of November, so they were born at tailing time, so they're uh, just been just been weaned off the bottle, but they still definitely hang around for their sheep nuts. Um, I mean, with the with the animals all around here and things too, people love the idea of having the pet lambs and the horses and the and the dogs and everything around here as well. So, no, it's certainly country life. Gladstone Downs, which neighbours Camden, is the starting point for the popular three-day hotter route up South Marlborough's crowning glory, Mount Tapawai o Uanuku. The name of the Monga is taken from the early Polynesian explorer Uenuku, who came to Aotearoa in search of his love interest and scaled the mountain upon arrival. This monga is renowned as the 1940s training ground for Sir Edmund Hillary in the lead up to his summit of Mount Everest. So what we do is one Sunday a month we open up the tracks to bikers and it's a pretty casual arrangement. They just show up, we give them a map and have a bit of a yarn and they'll head on out the track as far as they feel like going. Hi ladies. 
How, How are, are you? Going? Beautiful day of the Isle of Perry. What's that? So yeah. um, this is Dave and Dita. G'day, nice Hi. to meet you. Hi, Lee. Nice to meet you. Um, and we also do overnight trips out to the hut, which can be what people want them to be. They want us to take gear for them, cook them a meal. They can have a little bit of wild venison off the station, merino meat. Um, I can keep their beers cold for them until they get there. Yeah. Well, it's quite unique, they get the whole hut to themselves, they're not going to have to share with anyone else. It's, it's a unique experience. And they get to talk to us if they want to about the station, and maybe learn a little bit about high country Marlborough. Good job, the view's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> How beautiful. Oh, oh, yep. Oh, it's definitely a challenge. Yeah, a a but uh, it's steep and quite unrelenting, but occasionally you'd look back down that way and with every metre of elevation, you just, the views just keep getting bigger. So yep. definitely worth the climb and you come up over this ridge. And do you have any do you have any stock up here in the winter, or you move them all down to the slower country? Uh, yeah. No, they are all in, in either here or right over the back. Oh, um, okay. When you get out into the swale, right. the chalk range, it's a lot lower again. It's the same elevation as the house. So Great. where to next? Which way? Um, well, you carry on out here. And then I was, I don't know, having problems with the brake. I don't know what's yeah, going on with that. Yeah. Well done, guys. You did well. Hi. Hello. Yep. This is Rhonda and Heather. Hi. 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 So we uh, purchased Love Thy Curry a couple of years ago um, and we produce uh, pre-mixed curry spice kits. So what we are making here today is we are actually making a madras curry but not with lamb as the packet said but we are creating it with goat today. So we are going to cook the goat which has been provided to us by Premium Game on the we clean cooker. There we go, that's better. And then once it's browned off, we'll add it to the curry where it will continue cooking. So this is the garlic, ginger and spice mix going into the onions. Thank you. 